What, am I your fucking personal teddy bear now or something? Yes. We're part of the moonlight. I ain't a fan to say. Can't bring the sunlight. Hello, Roma. This is the Roma here. Welcome back to Red Embrace Hollywood. We're here with Randall. And I'm going to see. See, I'm going to say the happy American bubble seems like hell. I'm happy with who I am. He reached, whoa, 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 what is the screen here? What's happening? He reached out suddenly, curling an arm around my shoulder, squeezing me into a hug against his side. Can I see the hug? Even though his body had no warmth, his embrace overflowed it. What the? What the fuck? Never changed that, Michiko. I wanted to see the fucking hug! Wait. Hold on. Hold on. It might be in the gallery, maybe. Randall. Randall? Randall? No? No? No, it's not in the gallery. Alright, so I, I tried to see if there was an update or anything and see why I had that black screen, but it doesn't look like there is anything. Um, I also can't see in the gallery if there was extra, extra transitional images of it. Nothing showed up, so I'm upset that we can't see a fucking hug. <laughs> When Randall finally pulled away, he held onto my shoulders for a moment longer, squeezing them firmly. And if anyone tells you to change, well, tell them to fuck themselves, alright? Oh, I will, you can count on that, Randall. Could, oh, could I get another hug? <laughs> I'd love that. Can I get another hug? What, am I your fucking personal teddy bear now or something? Yes. <laughs> I'm so sad we can't see it! Despite his teasing protest, Randall pulled me into another rough hug. R half ruffling, half stroking a hand through my hair. I'm upset we can't see it. Not so far below us, the band had finished up their last take. Everyone was packing up in relaxed laughter. Chatter drifted di distantly through the air. The Cadman was lingering by himself. His bandmates and crew seemed to be giving him a wide breath, birth, either by his request or because there was some unseen, unspoken barrier between them. He leaned against the building across from us, staring down at his exquisitely crafted microphone, slowly turning it over in his gloved hands. The song on the speakers was still looping. His own rasping voice must have been echoing in his ears. The soundtrack to his life played out in real time. Is he okay? <laughs> Probably not. Well, that was pretty tame, huh? Randall let out a long sigh, stretching his powerful armor over his hat. Kind of disappointed nothing got to set got set on fire, but I guess they're filming a ballad, not some loud stomping anthem. So probably less testosterone in the air. Under I wonder if we'll show up in the music video. We're not. We're up here. What now? Are we going up for ice cream? Something tells me Cadma would make a good vampire. I don't want him to be a vampire. I think he's over life already. Ice cream? Sure, some good old-fashioned blood sorbet. Maybe we can catch a movie too. I hear Attack of the Martian Swamp Cows 2 is a real hit. Oh, really? <laughs> Randall took it down at me as we walked towards the other edge of the rooftop. He stayed close to my side, so close that our hands brushed together. There was something gentler about Randall when we were alone, unlike the times we'd spent with his clan. Maybe a part of him that others weren't supposed to see. I like this side of him. It's cute. Alright, I'll go down first. Crouching on the concrete, Randall reached out to grab the fire escape ladder. I feel like something wrong is gonna happen. I watched his bandage palm squeeze around the metal. A piercing sound split the air. Something wet, wet splattered my face. Blood and tissue. What? One of Randall's hands jerked up to, to the hole in his throat. Wait, what? He stumbled backwards, his eyes rolling back in his head. Wait! Wait! What the fuck just happened? Then almost in slow motion, he fell. Wait! Are you okay? Fuck it, I'm dying. Rush forward to grab him. Before I knew, I darted over the edge to the rooftop, but it was futile. I couldn't move fast enough. What just happened? <laughs> Fucking shit. Fuck. Wee! Randall had to hit the ground. Somehow he managed to catch onto the ladder, and a loud scream of hisses and choked swearing reached me from below. Uh, jumped to the ground to catch him? Look for who shot him? We gotta see who shot him, right? My eyes started to the building across the street. The second I turned my head, a figure by the window suddenly moved. They moved so too fast for me to glimpse their features, but they clearly been watching me. Mm, when I jerked my head back to Randall, he already almost lowered himself to the ground. A pool of blood had splattered below him, but he seemed to still have some strength. 
Are you okay? You're not dead, dead, right? By the time he quickly slid down the ladder, he was already on the pavement, hissing through his teeth. Christ, that fucking coward. When he pulled his hand away, his vanished palm was soaked with blood, its bitter smell burning my senses. Uh, uh, we need to get out of here now? I don't know. Would they leave us alone now that they shot him? Fuck. What? What? Rush to help him? I ran forward, reaching out to try and support him. No, don't. But he raised a hand to stop me, forcing me back. They might aim for you too. I don't give a shit! You should get somewhere safe. The hole in Randall's neck was sealing over, but his wounds still sound painful. <sighs> At that moment, a loud shout sharply echoed nearby. Then the sound of footsteps running on asphalt, the presence of vampires. It sounded like a large group approaching us at an alarming pace. What? Uh, get ready to fight. <laughs> get ready for a fight, my body tense, and alert us slowly into a crouch. I was unarmed except for Randall's knife, but we, could, we couldn't escape like this. Michiko, it's alright. No, it's not! You almost died! Randall's strange voice called out to me. When I glanced over to him, I realized he didn't look alarmed, just apprehensive. Well, I'm alarmed. As if on cue, a crowd of some familiar figures suddenly appeared at the end of the street. Oh. Oh, thank God. It's just friends. <laughs> Randall! Michiko! Jesus Christ, what the hell happened? The girl of I rushed over to us with Jack at the front. What the- Someone shot you? Where are they? Where are they? I'm gonna kill someone! A distressed commotion of cries and hisses rang out as soon as they saw Randall's wound, and they instantly swarmed him, trying to see if he was alright. It's fine, it's fine. Sure makes you appreciate the vamp blood, though. Fuck. <laughs> As Randall tried to reassure the group, Jack stepped up to me, eyeing the blood on my face. Shit, Michiko, are you okay? Uh, do I look okay to you? <laughs> I could really use a washcloth, to be honest. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm more worried about Randall. He'll be okay if you didn't- If you don't get shot in the heart or the head, it heals pretty fast. But fuck, they aimed me higher. It's those fucking Iskari. I knew it. They shot him. We don't know that. We don't know that. Outraged snarling. I could. I still live with them. We're fucked. Okay. Outraged snarling filled the air, stirring up blood, up, up, up a blood less so palpable that I could feel it. We'll kill all those fuckers. Every last one of them. They're monsters. They deserve to die. Jack threw the rest of the group an une uneasy glance. We came out here because someone called the beach house. They said a group of Iskari were heading this way. We we're gonna scout around to make sure you guys are safe, but then we heard the shot. How did the Scar you know we'd be here? Cherise has spies everywhere, man. I'm not part of her spy gang, so... <laughs> her and the Gogol leader. They know everything that happens. Michiko. Huh? Well, I'm working with the fucking Golgotha. Mmm. 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 When husky voice called my name, I turned to see Randall walking towards me, a little unsteady on his feet. I'll see you- I'll- I'll see you, Michiko. After a small glance, Jack left my side, hurrying over to the others. The hole in Randall's throat was almost healed- was already mostly healed, the blood in his throat wiped away. But it looked- looked shaken up, his body drained of energy. I have one of my guys- I- I have one of my guys call you a cab. You should get out of here before something else happens. You sure you'll be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Just no yodeling for the rest of the night, maybe. Exhaling a heavy breath, Randall ran a hand through his hair, his nails still caked with blood. The others, they told me about that call to the beach house. Someone said that Scar were going to attack us or something. The caller didn't give their name, just hung up real quick. Guess everyone figured it was a friend. But something, something makes me wonder if that call wasn't working with the assassin. He paused, his somber, uncertain voice fading to a faint whisper. If they weren't trying to make it an audience. I think you're jumping to conclusions. An audience for what? You're right. The timing is too suspicious. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Fuck. I'm probably just being a paranoid piece of shit. Coincidences happen. For once, Randall seemed like he didn't know what to say. Like he didn't know what he was feeling either. Listen, we'll hang out again soon. I'll make it up to you somehow. What? You don't have to make up for anything just to be safe. Jeez. But I should probably get back to the house. Nothing ruins a guy's night like getting shot, let me tell you. Be careful, Randall. Please hug him. <gasps> If there's an option for a hug, I'm gonna go for the hug. Hug him. 
I curled my arms around Randall with a tight squeeze. After a moment, his hand gently patted my back, a more light and hesitant touch than I was used to. The front of his dark shirt was still soaked with blood, burning my senses when I pressed my head against his chest. Aww. After we said our uneasy goodbyes, I watched Randall leave with his group, the Mavar protectively clustering around him as they walked off. But before I took a cab back to the hotel, I had to stop at a gas station to wash off my face. Randall's dried blood felt like it was eating into my skin. I mean, it's pretty toxic to, to me. Our bloods are pretty toxic to each other. <sighs> the next evening, I'd still gotten no word of a new mission. After waiting around for a little while, hunger stirred in my stomach, so I decided to... David! I called it in David, who scrambled to the room as fast as he could. Possibly could. Take as much from me as you want. I don't mind passing out or anything. No, I'm not killing you. No, no. That's big no-no. My stream of moans and cries instantly tore from David's lips, starting at a nearly deafening volume but lowering little by little. Eventually, I heard only a few weak whimpers leaking out from his throat, and I knew I'd taken enough of his delicious, warm, sweet blood. David seemed barely able to stand on his feet, so I took him back to his room before making my way downstairs. Where am I going? Michiko. Excuse me a moment, your time, please. Shit, what do you want? Just as I was about to leave the hotel, Sharice's agent called out behind me. The evening had been uneventful so far, so I figured I was in the clear, but apparently not. Miss Locke would like to speak with you. No! <laughs> Alright, where is she? Please head over to the meeting room. She's waiting for you there. Okay. Am I finally gonna see um the the human I took his spot from yet? Offer me a sli slightly urgent, uneasy nod, he turned to hurry off somewhere. I could only imagine what had come up this time. My instincts told me it wasn't going to be good. Obviously not. Hello? Michiko? How gracious of you to make an appearance! When I entered the meeting room, Shuri rose from her seat, approaching me with slow, deliberate strides. The troubled look in her eyes instantly confirmed my suspicions. What? Well, I won't mince words. As you might have already guessed, I am in need of your services. Last night, there was another murder. Okay. <laughs> Here we go again. Cherie's paused for a few long moments, or a long few minutes. Moments? Briefly biting her lip. The body was mutilated, her ears and eyes cut out, wires stuffed into the sockets. This makes the third victim of this hidden killer, and only the third victim whose body we found. There are many- there may- Excuse me. There may very well be others who have yet to be discovered or uncovered. We can't afford to ignore the situation. Uh, okay. I agree. They may target you or me next. You are very much correct. It is a great hazard to all of us. It needs to be dealt with swiftly. She shook her head intently, letting out a strained sigh. We believe the killer regularly returns to the sewers, where the previous bodies have been found, because the stench makes even distinct sense very difficult to track. However, right before I asked you here, I received word that my agent lost contact with a partner by the Sunset Strip. She tracked his scent to the sewers, but called for her for help rather than risk entering herself. Smart idea. Indeed, as cool as that sounds, charging unprepared after a murderer to rescue someone is a recipe for death. Now, if we were to send a large group, I have no doubt that our killer would easily realize that, he, that, that, that realize they have been discovered. This person must be extraordinarily sensitive to the presence of others, as they've somehow avoided detection so far. Therefore, I intend to send only two agents. Tedrick, one of my more combat skilled assistants, and you. Your combat assistant is a pussy ass bitch, but I not take care of it. I appreciate your attitude, but don't assume it will be a mundane task. This murderer is very unpredictable and apparently all too intelligent. Her brow furrowed into, into a deep, unhappy line. There are weapons I have left for you at the front desk, just in case they're unnecessary. Uh, they're necessary, not unnecessary. Good luck, Michiko. Make sure you return intact. Okay. Uh, if I die, I give my room's horse painting to Randall. <laughs> When I returned to the lobby's desk, the court discreetly handed me a black box. It had an expensive-looking combat knife and a clock handgun, complete with a small amount of ammunition. I tucked the weapons into my jacket, wondering if I'd end up needing them. You do. Maybe. I'm actually gonna, um, accept his request or whatever, so maybe we won't have to use the weapons. Outside, Charisse's car was waiting for me, and climbed into the back seat where my partner was already slouched inside. Okay, I don't know why Cherise sent you, and honestly, I don't really care. Kedrick, a short, tan man with a hooked nose and beady eyes, gave me a disparaging look. 
All I need to know is this. What's your combat experience like? Um, I cry when I... No, wait. Not much, but I can handle a gun. I've been through a lot in this route. I think I know how to... I haven't held a gun, but I've held a knife, so let's not tell him that. Alright, just stay alert and tell me the second he sees anyone down in the sewers. And that was the extent of our conversation during the car ride. The part perpetually silent driver took us straight to the Sunset Strip. Or more accurately, a few blocks down, there, where the missing agent had disappeared. Hello, sewers. My senses were already prickling on high alert as I stepped out of the car. And this is where we are going to stop for today. A lot is happening. Holy shit. We can now finally meet the, um, the guy. I don't know what he was. The uh, previous hunter, vampire hunter, but now he's just berserk. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let it, let it.